Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to all those who are joining from Washington, D.C., and good evening to everyone joining from India. Uh, I'm Shashrut. I'm your host for this webinar. I'm a fellow at CSIS. And today we are going to discuss the rooftop solar for MSMEs, uh, and we are going to discuss about integration of renewable energy and energy efficiency measures. Considering how important MSMEs are to Indian economy based on the uh, number of people they employ, the amount of electricity they consume, and at the same time, the amount of potential they offer for rooftop solar. We have on the panel today, Mr. Uh, Jeevan Jathani from MNRE, Mr. P.S. Sundar from Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Mr. Mahesh Patankar from uh, MPN Systems, and Ms. Sandy Fazeli from NASIO. First of all, uh, I would ask Mr. Jeevan Jathani to uh, give his opening remarks, followed by Mr. Sundar, uh, Mr. Sundar uh, followed by Ms. Sandy, and then towards the end, Mahesh. Afterwards, we'll have some questions for our panelists, and if time permits, we'll also take questions from the audience. Uh, Mr. Jeevan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shashwat. Uh, I'll just uh, take a few minutes to give a brief background about the rooftop in India. Uh, in National Solar Mission, uh, when the targets was enhanced in 2015, from 20 gigawatt to 100 gigawatt, the rooftop target was kept at 40 gigawatt to be achieved by 2022. And the purpose of keeping the, this high target for uh, rooftop is because at that point of time, uh, the issues like the acquisition of land, then creation of transmission line was there. So it was thought that the rooftop would be more efficient in the sense that it doesn't require the land, that doesn't require the transmission line, and it also save the TND losses. Later, when uh, the solar park scheme came, then uh, we have come out with the ISTS waiver. So interstate transmission charges have also been waived. So the utility scale projects are coming more than the uh, rooftop. And on the rooftop side, of course, the, when the distribution companies were thinking that their revenue is going to be down because they are high paying consumers which are going out of their uh, per week. But still, uh, rooftop is progressing. Initially, we have got given some kind of subsidy for the common buildings, institutions, uh, the charitable trust and residential sector. Later, when uh, the solar PV uh, price came down, we removed the subsidy from the other sectors. Now that presently the subsidy is available only for the residential sector. For coming back to the MSME sector, the Total potential, if I say that rough estimate says that around 15 gigawatt of rooftop potential is there in the MSME sector. And presently the tariff of uh, the MSME sector, the electricity tariff is around, uh, it's different in the different state for the different category of uh, industries, so starting from five rupees to 12 rupees per unit. Uh, several uh, schemes, or I would say the uh, concessional financing were given. Uh, in uh, 2016, the World Bank project was there, wherein uh, uh, the 625 US dollar, million US dollar was uh, funding was provided by the World Bank through SBI for the CNI sector. Then uh, the Green uh, Climate Fund is there, where uh, one project of 250 million US dollar was sanctioned to Tata Clean Tech, and there the, both the projects are. Uh, doing well. The World Bank project is almost completed. They have dispersed the loan. And now they have proposed a $100 million credit guarantee scheme through this credit guarantee trust fund for the MSME. They will be implementing that project. So we have the several policy measures also. In the sense, we have now created a green energy open access rules, wherein even the 100 <laughs> SD load or load can take the power through open access. And there is a uh, right to consumer rules. So there is a it, it, has a, it gives rights to the consumer to install a rooftop. Recently, these rules have been amended and now uh, the time of tariff is also being introduced, which is, of course, it is going to be uh, effective from 1st of April 2024. So for the loads about 10 kilowatt, in industrial and commercial sector, there will be a time of day tariff. And that tariff different from peak to non of peak hours would be around 20%. So the apprehension from the uh, 
the discoms that we are going to lose the revenue will not be there so they can have more and more solar because the tariff at the solar hours will be lower and the tariff for the peak hours will be higher uh, that difference could be around 20 percent so these are the policy measures which we have taken and uh, uh, we are more aggressive going to aggressive towards solar rooftop and uh, there are benefits of this so i will stop here and uh, we'll interact more when there are questions out there thank you uh, thank you, Mr. Jatani. Now I will ask Mr. P. S. Sundar from Bureau of Energy Efficiency uh, to give his opening remarks. Thank you, Shashwat. So uh, good evening, uh, everyone, and good morning to all uh, who are participating from all over the world. So let me see. I'm uh, myself, Sham Sundar. I'm uh, from Bureau of Energy Efficiency. It's a, a nodal agency under the Ministry of Power. Uh, which is formed with a mandate of coming up with energy efficiency and energy conservation policies in all economic sectors. So I handle a portfolio uh, for SME sector uh, in BE. So, so far, uh, if, if possible, can I you know, use my presentation also uh, to support? I, I hope it is. Uh... Uh, sir, I think it will be better not to have a presentation now. Okay. okay. So then. Yeah. See, so far we had in, has already initiated a lot of activities uh, in the energy congestion area, uh, especially in the industrial sector. Uh, that is for uh, where we have come up with uh, a large scale policy program that is called Perform Achieve and Trade Mechanism. It's a cap and trade mechanism uh, that was initiated uh, by BE. Uh, so far, uh, 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 we are giving energy congestion norms to each industry, the resident consumers uh, in the program. To come up with the savings of uh, targeted energy savings uh, within a stipulated time. So far, it's a successful program uh, for large industries. Whereas for MSME sector, it's quite challenging because the whole landscape of MSME sector in India is too diverse, and also the the interest of energy savings and also unlocking energy efficiency, also pushing uh, efficient technologies uh, in various sectors. Uh, it's quite challenging because it is largely depending upon the uh, because you don't have a baseline data uh, uh, in the front for, in the initially and uh, even the consumers are not aware of which technologies to adopt and uh, they don't have any awareness about uh, what kind of energy efficiency measures or technology that will be suitably adopted uh, in their facility or in the line of production of uh, production line so uh, that is a more quite challenging and also due to this a lot of there is a lot of reluctance uh, from the bank uh, to support these msme sectors uh, to for successful uh, lending program because they don't have any confidence about uh, the kind of projects uh, that could be uh, funded for towards energy efficiency so so in this regard we have worked uh, since 2007 and created this national wide program for technology upgradation uh, in msme sector initially we formed a, a dedicated program for uh, 36 clusters to just to kickstart this program in India to overview like what could be the, the saving potential and also uh, give a develop kind of a, uh, a system uh, to uh, build a capacity program on various activities and also uh, various initiatives to generate to basic understanding about energy conservation and also the, the energy efficiency gaps and uh, we also bridged various financial institutions uh, to the MSMEs for a successful uh, lending program. So in this initial phase, uh, we touched about 36 clusters and that was a successful initiative. Then we move on to uh, scale this initiatives with the support of uh, two uh, multilateral funding programs uh, jointly um, through World Bank and also from UNIDO. Uh, this was a large scale program that, uh, which convened for more than 12 years collectively from the, both the programs and we have touched base about 150 clusters where we have supported uh, many several industries uh, to come up with uh, uh, baseline studies and also develop uh, the uh, technical reports and also implementation of programs and so far we have touched about 560 crores of investment that is attracted from the msme uh, through our these uh, programs so as of now what we have done is we are taking forward these learnings from these uh, two uh, multilateral uh, programs uh, and the takeaways that have come up from this program and also what we has understood is now 
more or less, I think we have touched base about all the major energy intensive uh, sectors in MSME. And we have understood the, the, the technology and also the uh, the kind of investment that is required, uh, the size of investment that is required for each sector, and also what kind of policy focused initiative that each sector has really looking forward uh, for uh, for the under 10 years. And also, this, anyway, we have these larger goals uh, that we have set for India, that is for 2030 and also to attend, uh, towards 2070, achieving net zero. So what kind of decarbonization initiatives that each sector has to come up with? So these studies have been uh, compiled for about 11 sectors. So now B is focusing more on implementation program on an esco based model, uh, uh, focusing on technology uh, implementation, also uh, more or less the transforming the sector with upgradation to latest technologies uh, in use today. So these are the current activities as of now that B is really focusing. And uh, we have also assessed uh, since the for uh, to address it for the thematic of this uh, meeting. So we also analyzed internally in B, since we have touched base about 150 clusters, we also uh, conducted a brief study internally to examine what is the rooftop potential uh, is there in these 150 clusters. So uh, with this small study, we have uh, analyzed there are about uh, three to eight gigawatts of uh, collective uh, solar rooftop P potential in MSME clusters where we have explored. So th this is, I believe, since we are working on the, the mandate of BEs towards energy efficiency, but uh, we also, because looking ahead towards the energy transition as well. So we are also uh, thinking of to uh, come up with a similar program uh, along with uh, MNRI, we will be soon discussing with MNRI shortly. So we are uh, using this study. So we want to build a solarization of MSME clusters in future. So since we have uh, the ground information about each technology, each, each units and their uh, uh, rooftop potentials. So we are soon to going to discuss about this plan shortly in uh, due course. So this is a... Yeah, no, uh, thank you, sir. I just uh, wanted to make sure that we have uh, the opening remarks and then we'll actually it's a very interesting thing that you mentioned about the GEF UNIDO and BE project. And uh, we'll take up some questions to up on it uh, up in 10 minutes time when the other, the other two panelists have given their remarks. Uh, so I'll ask uh, Sandy now to talk about the same, uh, the integration of renewable and EE measures, but from the United perspective of the United States. Yes, thank you so much, Shashwad. It's um, an honor to be included on this panel, and I'm enjoying learning about how India is contemplating these types of program designs um, in energy efficiency and solar. Um, so just for some background, um, my organization is the National Association of State Energy Officials, also known as NASIO. Uh, we're very privileged to actually have a partnership with the Association of Renewable Energy Agencies of States in India. Um, and uh, through that, our, our focus really has been on bringing together um, state and Indian energy officials um, to connect at the subnational level. Um, so here in the U.S., NASIO's focus is on, is on the U.S. state and territory energy offices. And as you can imagine, there's quite a bit of diversity in terms of uh, the types, um, the sizes, and the, the priorities of, of the different states that we work with. Um, but uh, as a common denominator, uh, many of the energy offices are very focused on energy efficiency as a way to uh, reduce savings, uh, reduce energy cost burdens, um, and support um, business competitiveness in their building sector. Um, our members um, run different types of programs, uh, whether it's in um, demand flexibility, um, traditional energy efficiency, rooftop solar incentives, um, financing that help um, uh, support the sector in all different ways. Uh, and in our role at NASIO, we have been tracking how federal partners and state energy offices are delivering benefits um, to the homes, businesses, and institutions um, through clean energy investments, um, as well as new and, and emerging programs, um, and some of the general guiding principles that we see driving how energy efficiency and solar can work together in buildings and facilities. Um, and I'm happy to dive into that further during the discussion. Thank you, Shashma. Uh, thank you, Sandy, for your uh, brief remarks. And uh, now I ask Mahesh. 
Thank you, Shashwit. Uh, really glad to be here on this uh, webinar. And uh, uh, thank you, fellow panelists, for uh, uh, kickstarting this discussion with uh, a lot of information from the government side, as well as some examples from the US. Uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, why MSMEs uh, should be doing energy efficiency and renewable energy. So there are several uh, non-government-led initiatives and non-government sort of uh, triggers that the MSMEs uh, have access to. And uh, one important uh, uh, part there is productivity. So if you look at sectors such as uh, textiles, it employs maximum number of uh, workers uh, in the Indian MSMEs, uh, followed by uh, the automobile sector. Uh, that sector needs to be competitive. And one of the ways to in, uh, be productive is and, or uh, improve productivity is a coexistence of energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy. So it's now sort of a settled uh, uh, conclusion that uh, energy efficiency clearly is the first fuel. So if you can really save energy uh, use consumption um, and uh, do solarization, I think that's a, a double advantage. And there are several uh, opportunities for the Indian MSMEs, including the carbon uh, border uh, adjustment mechanism, which is a requirement from Europe for the exporters from India at the in the, in the first instance. And secondly, there's a lot of pressure on the sustainability, uh, including scope one, scope two, so scope three, uh, uh, and tier one, tier two suppliers in large uh, sort of buyers, be it in textile sector as well as the automobile sector. So that said, uh, the Indian MSMEs do understand um, energy efficiency, renewable energy, both. Uh, I also would like to point to the opportunity where we have uh, concentrated solar power uh, and concentrated solar thermal uh, to be integrated as a part of the renewable energy portfolio in the MSMEs. And uh, that opportunity exists in multiple sectors, including uh, food, beverages, uh, uh, boiler, uh, uh, fridge stock, so and so forth. So that's another opportunity. And I must also mention here uh, a lot of uh, efforts being taken by the Department of Science and Technology to bring in innovations. So I think gone are the days, in my opinion, uh, where we could sort of focus on replacing a pump or a motor or a compressor. I think it's important for us to move towards process optimization. And that's where uh, some of the uh, efforts being uh, carried forward by DST and several Indo-UK, Indo-US, Indo-Singapore, Indo-Japan type of initiatives, wherein a lot of innovations were sort of being brought into the Indian MSME sector are uh, noteworthy. Uh, and lastly, uh, there is uh, this entire financing angle. And uh, we talked about energy services companies, but we are not really seeing a lot of projects that are being implemented in the MSME sector because of the payment security uh, mechanism uh, non-existent. Uh, and uh, 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 also the cost of finance is not really low for MSMEs. If we really look at all the sovereign guarantees and the uh, currency hedging, even when we look at uh, multilateral funding coming to the MSMEs through SIDB and the likes of that. Uh, so I think it's also important to pay some attention to the financing aspect. Uh, I'll pause here and I'll come back with a few uh, prospective solutions that we can think through uh, here. Uh, Shashwet, back to you. Thank you. Well, I think uh, I should. Uh, I would like to thank all the panelists to begin with because I know I apologize for the delay that we had in the start, but we still have now made up for our lost time and we have 30 minutes for question and answers. Uh, for the audience, if you have questions, please do uh, please do send it to us uh, through the chat box. Uh, I will. I have one or two questions to begin with for uh, Mr. Sundar and Mr. Jitani, and I believe Mahesh, you also have some questions for our pa uh, panelists. So let me begin with this question for Mr. Sundar. Uh, Mr. Sundar, you mentioned about this, the the uh, GEF Unido and BE project where you did this uh, twelve-year study in different clusters. So could you talk about a few key takeaways from that study? Because both Jatani sir and you had mentioned that there is sufficient three, uh, around three to seven gigawatt potential in the 150 clusters that you studied and around overall 15 gigawatt potential for rooftop MSMEs. So what, what were the certain key outcomes from the study? And the second one would be based on those outcomes and the existing schemes that MNRE and BE have Indi individually for energy efficiency and solar deployment, where the integration in policy could happen both at the center and at the state level. Okay, so, so under the Jeff Unido project, that is, uh, that was jointly implemented by Unido. Um, the program was called as uh, the promoting energy efficiency and renewable energy in selected MSME clusters. 
so the project was uh, implemented uh, for 12 clusters in india for in five uh, sectors that is for uh, foundry dairy uh, brass ceramics and uh, textile so these the in these sectors we have explored about 12 clusters initially to ha given hand holding services support uh, to the msme clusters uh, conducted uh, various studies scale and uh, identified various e technologies uh, which is have a good replicate replic replication potential and also uh, uh, the acceptance of uh, various other units in the cluster so once we identified this and uh, we we saw a lot of potential of energy savings and then we went ahead in an esco based mode uh, uh, aggregating the technologies and also the receiving expression of interest uh, from uh, other units uh, where we are willing to uh, take forward similar implementation in the cluster so uh, and also we have supported lot of various capacity building activities uh, uh, in, in the same 12 clusters uh, such as uh, introducing them uh, to the energy management standards training them towards iso 5001 and also we set it up a uh, energy management center in this cluster and also a dedicated manpower uh, who can give a hand holding services in all in all aspects uh, to uh, support them in terms of giving a walk through audit to understand uh, where the opportunities are there and what kind of services the unit can uh, really looking forward and what kind of uh, support uh, in terms of identifying technologies and also the implementation support. So out of all these initiatives, what we understand is the MSMA cluster is really looking forward uh, some kind of uh, uh, handholding services. One thing that's the first thing we, uh, we learned from these exercises and also uh, they, need, they need a constant push uh, from, the, from the government side and also uh, continuous capacity building program so that they keep on uh, uh, relying on this track uh, because they need because uh, they're all very production oriented and uh, they don't uh, give much focus about uh, the current developments but though the association in the clusters are well aware but uh, they are really focused about their current day-to-day -day activities so this uh, constant and continuous support and also some kind of a financial push there also uh, in, was in need but we we but uh, quite it was quite surprising that most of the implementation was implemented by their own uh, by you know, their, by their own initiative so they didn't avail any uh, benefits from the government side but that was one uh, observation that we identified so taking forward uh, this success story in this 12 and we expanded the similar implementation in uh, scaled up to 17 more clusters in the country so again it was a successful program so so in this regard, in this unit project, I believe the one handholding services and also uh, the the sector needs a continuous uh, awareness program. So that was the two major factors that uh, really kicked off uh, and also gave a successful outcome. And it, it has really uh, one of the successful success story that we have so far implemented and uh, through the Jeff support program. Uh, well. Uh, Mr. Jitani, uh, taking forward from what Mr. Sundar has mentioned about the need for financial support and solar deployment is the prerogative of MNRE. So, where, so the, my question to you in this case is where does the policy integration can happen at the center, at the central level to begin with first? And then what does the road ahead look for the states? Because at the end, implementation has to be led by the state governments in India. Uh, you're on mute, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So what Sundar and Mahesh has said about uh, the sector, I totally agree that uh, first is the awareness. You need the MSME sector doesn't know uh, what are the benefits of solar and the technical support, the handholding what he has mentioned. So on uh, uh, policy side, what we are doing here in the uh, ministry is, of course, the cost of solar is now reached at a level where you don't need any subsidy, but you need some kind of support from the states for the implementation, like the RESCO mode, aggregating the demand. So clusters based approach, what Mr. Sundar has said, that the cluster based approach wherein you can aggregate the demand so that there is an economy of scale. And then in cluster, you can create the awareness also. It's easy to create awareness among them. 
Mr. Uh, Mahesh has also mentioned that uh, the solar thermal should also be promoted, the concentrated solar thermal. So we were promoting the solar uh, concentrated solar thermal uh, a few years back with our scheme uh, that is also supported through UNIDO, wherein the UNIDO is providing concessional loan for that purpose. But what we have observed that uh, the solar PV is more preferred than solar thermal because in solar thermal there is, this is, there is a complexity in the sense uh, there is a tracking of the sun and uh, the steam generation is there, piping and other thing is there. So, and they have the limited space for uh, the sunshine, uh, solar sunshine. So they prefer to go with the solar PV because it is very, more convenient. That's no requirement of the maintenance and other thing. Complexity is also not there. And these industries, of course, require the uh, electricity also. So, uh, and also what we have observed that uh, the service providers, so those who are installing the solar thermal are not continuously providing the service and thereby the system which has been installed for a, a life of say 20 years or like that, but it is operating just for the few years, say two, three years and that it is not working properly. Uh, these are the observations we have seen for the solar thermal, but still we are uh, ready to in promote the solar thermal provided the, some of the vendors or the manufacturers or the suppliers are coming forward and ensuring that yes, they will uh, be uh, handhold to the MSME sector for the uh, performance in the next say five to 10 years, but which is not there earlier. So we can promote this uh, thermal uh, sector also uh, on performance basis. We can give them a kind of say incentives. If you perform, you will get the incentive like that. The, the, you also, uh, Mesh, you also pointed about the payment security mechanism. Of course, that is also a crucial one because the Resco company, which is coming forward, uh, they need that the payment should be secured. And in a cluster based approach, uh, I think that is very uh, practical, practically possible in the sense uh, you can have a single point agency who can provide you the payment. It's not that like we have done in the SEKI, wherein the bidding is done by the SEKI. The, of course, there is a uh, PP assigned by SEKI and then the power supply agreement is with the distribution company. But the vendor is or the installer is getting payment from the SEKI. Such kind of arrangement would be helpful in promotion of the rooftop solar in MSME sector. So these are some, and another thing point is the carbon markets. I think uh, Mr. Sham will let us uh, talk about the carbon markets, which the under Energy Conservation Act they have uh, amended and there will be a national uh, carbon market. Slowly, I think uh, Mesh also mentioned that when you're going to export your production to the, uh, say Europe or America or somewhere, they ask that well, how much is your carbon footprints? So you have to reduce your carbon footprints. You have to use more and more solar or uh, renewable energy. And now we have the green tariff. In on policy side, we now have the green tariff. That is, if you ask for the distribution company to supply you a uh, green power, they have to supply you a green power. Of course, there will be a small premium for that. And with these, uh, the policy measures kind of uh, say greener energy open access, I think the slowly now the people, the industries are coming forward towards more and more uh, green power, and and this is going to be increased. Thank you. We can have a few more questions on that. Yeah. Uh, Mahesh, over to you. I believe you have some questions also. Yeah, so uh, I think this is very interesting, and frankly, uh, we all have been on several sort of uh, similar discussion uh, forum. Uh, I think this is very exciting, where we have MNRE, we have Bureau of Energy Efficiency, we have uh, some stalwarts from uh, US uh, who have sort of done that and contributed to uh, their goals, you know. So I think it's uh, very interesting. And in that context, I have uh, a few sort of uh, questions. Let me start with uh, 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 Mr. Sundar. Uh, you talked about uh, several industrial clusters where uh, this aggregation is possible and B has been supporting uh, uh, the handholding and capacity building and uh, audits and ESCO based mechanisms and so on. So uh, I was just wondering, is there any possibility of Bureau of Energy Efficiency already thinking about um, creating new structures such as, say, steam as a service? Uh, 
So in one of the textile uh, uh, sectors in uh, Surat, we have been exploring this where uh, uh, one could have biomass based steam or so constantly solar thermal at the same time complementary uh, complementary sort of uh, energy coming from the solar photovoltaics for the electrical uh, systems and so on. So uh, is there any thought from the Bureau of Energy Efficiency to identify certain specific projects? Uh, those become demonstration demonstration projects. I don't want to call those as pilot projects. I would like to call those as demonstration projects, which are replicable. So any thoughts on that uh, from you, Sundarji? Uh, definitely, yes. So in our recent, uh, I was mentioning about the explosion study, what we did in uh, 12 clusters, uh, that mapping that in-house we is, uh, uh, study for 12 clusters, 12, 12 sectors, sorry. So we did a comprehensive uh, energy and resource mapping study uh, for foundry, forging, steel rolling paper, uh, glass and refractory chemicals, uh, dairy and brick sector. So in this study, it is uh, is more or less a comprehensive study to understand the energy uh, demand in each sector and also the what are the technology compendium and also uh, the, the policy focused intervention uh, that is really the sector is looking forward uh, based on the concentration with the associations. So under this technology compendium, to say more like in all the sectors uh, people have uh, suggested to come up with uh, a common utilities uh, in the clusters as a community uh, system so that was recommended in uh, in most of the uh, sectors uh, study uh, if it uh, if i say it's it's a common sand plant in foundry or it's a common uh, boiler uh, in various sectors and also uh, the the common um, steam uh, is also one of the recommendations that was posted. So what we have compiled all the recommendations and, and it also has a policy note as, as well that has come up uh, along with the study. So we have already placed our recommendation in our MOP uh, to discuss and take forward uh, such kind of a demand that is really uh, all the these few sectors are really looking forward. So we have placed our uh, the recommendation that has came out uh, from, from these studies to MOP. So that is a recent development uh, because this study was conceived uh, in the last two years and uh, got concluded uh, on, in uh, near August. So uh, th these are the current developments. And definitely there are thoughts and we have already captured it. And also the, we have captured at the sector level uh, what, what are the common uh, utilities that are, can be shared in the clusters. Uh, this uh, list has been shared. Thank you, thank you, sir. So I think this is very exciting, uh, and uh, this is exactly what we would have expected from the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. And thank you. I'm sure several panelists here, as well as the participants, would be able to contribute to that cause as well. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, turn to Sandy. Um, Sandy, I think the entire energy services company market uh, and the ESCO based uh, energy efficiency and productivity gains in uh, implementation. Uh, is as is an exemplar uh, as far as US is concerned, and associations like US, uh, as well as uh, AWE and so on, have been sort of uh, pushing forward uh, this particular agenda. So, any thoughts that you can share in terms of how these associations helped create larger aggregation uh, and industry voice, and at the same time, how did you uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, get DOE to support certain initiatives as well as banking system and the financiers to support the implementation. So uh, any thoughts on that from you, Sandy? Sure. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Mahesh. So just in terms of the energy savings performance contracting model here in the U.S., um, the federal government has actually been one of the biggest champions. Um, they've uh, been able to use uh, ESPC and ESCO models um, on federal buildings and campuses uh, with a lot of success. And uh, it actually, I think, is a point of pride in the U.S. that um, many federal buildings are uh, extremely energy efficient or um, able to reach even net zero, especially some of our national labs here. Um, what we're seeing in the small and medium enterprise sector, however, is that the ESCO model is not um, translating very well to smaller projects. Um, so I think the idea of aggregating could certainly be interesting. We also have um, a few examples here in the U.S. of um, what I've heard about called public purpose ESCOs, uh, which is 
um, the ESCOs without uh, as large of a profit-driven model. Um, so uh, we've seen those public purpose ESCOs try to uh, support energy efficiency retrofits um, in um, affordable housing, uh, multifamily buildings, um, nonprofit uh, sectors, which have been historically very difficult to um, reduce energy uh, consumption in through the ESCO model. Um, and we've seen some success there. Um, I'll also just add um, the energy as a service model. I think that uh, that was alluded to as well. Um, we've seen some really interesting companies, Schneider Electric, for instance, um, trying to promote EAAS across the US. Um, and then at the state level, there are a number of financing um, and funding programs that um, are trying to tackle energy efficiency um, in the small and medium um, business sector. Uh, there's something called the Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy um, or PACE uh, programs, which are run at the state or local level. Uh, those use tax assessments to be able to decrease um, energy consumption on site. Um, and many uh, users have also used that for solar um, um, and resilience measures as well. Um, and then um, some states as well run technical assistance programs that are targeted for uh, small and medium businesses and manufacturers, including, um, you know, energy audits to help get the process started, uh, lower cost financing so that they can access um, uh, better capital that maybe an ESCO type model would be able to provide as well. Um, so uh, even though the ESCO model hasn't been pervasive uh, as at the smaller business level, um, I think we have seen some really interesting workarounds to help um, bring bring up that sector of the economy here in the U.S. Thank you, thank you, Sandy. I think this is uh, really interesting, and I uh, I hope that CSI is able to sort of continue this discussion between uh, the U.S. counterparts as well as several uh, Indian government as well as state government uh, entities to do this kind of a cross-pollination of uh, opportunities and the lessons learned and so on. So thank you so much. And I think uh, even in India, we are not really seeing ESCO market taking off in the MSME sector because of all the barriers that we mentioned earlier. So I think we are, uh, in, I would say, similarly uh, positioned in a way. So is if at all there is any kind of a common um, uh, sort of knowledge base that we can create to uh, support this uh, particular sector would be useful. So we'll be happy to sort of collaborate with you on that. Uh, and I also like the one particular word that you use, public purpose ESCO. So uh, we never use that word for the Energy Efficiency Services Limited or Mahaprit in Maharashtra. So maybe uh, I would like to examine uh, if that can be called as a public purpose ESCO. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Uh, let me go to uh, Mr. Jetani. Mr. Jetani, I think what you spoke earlier is absolute sort of music to the ears. Uh, you talk about aggregation and uh, supporting through SEKI type of mechanisms, rooftop uh, implementation, uh, sort of photo the photovoltaic implementation in the MSME sector. So uh, how do we really collaborate? What are the sort of specific steps? Uh, would an industry association through the state designated agencies come forward and collaborate with MNR to create that kind of an aggregation? Is that one model or are you trying to look at uh, at uh, national aggregated uh, procurement for uh, MSMEs to uh, adapt uh, solarization? Uh, any, any, any thoughts from you, Mr. Jethani? So I would suggest uh, both can go parallel in the sense uh, there are certain clusters of industries where this aggregated model can go. And uh, the our Solar Energy Corporation of India can also uh, work on uh, similar lines wherein they can uh, uh, do a tendering process for empanelment of vendors. And the payment security mechanism kind of thing may be there. Because in the clusters, you have that provision you can have that sort of uh, because there is a economies of scale there is a single point uh, working but where there is a these are the scattered one there i think the vendors empaneled by the seki can provide the services and the seki can take a kind of uh, uh, some kind of payment guarantee mechanism that will be helpful so i i, I would suggest that both should go in parallel. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jatan. So I think there is a lot of uh, action items for us already uh, through the first 40 minutes or 50, 45 minutes of this call. So I'm going to uh, 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 take it back to uh, Shashwat. Shashwat, over to you, and it will be also useful uh, if you can elaborate a little bit about how CSI is working with a few states. At the same time, what are the kinds of opportunities that we can jointly support uh, uh, in India as well as in the US? Uh, over to you, Shashwat. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mahesh. Uh, so this pro the topic for the webinar that we are discussing about integration of renewable energy and energy efficiency measures. This is something which we are trying to, at CSIS, we are trying to work with our five to six state governments in India, understanding that it's the state governments who at the end have end of the day are responsible for a lot of implementation of the projects where the action lies on the ground. Uh, so the idea is to discuss how this integration can happen as we have been going through the questions. Uh, and one of the important things which came up, and I think I would like to pick up Mr. Sundar and Sandy on this part of carbon markets, something Mr. Jatani mentioned, of uh, how carbon, uh, in US also there are different states are coming up with voluntary carbon markets, uh, BE is uh, coming up with carbon markets in India, where the states will be again the nodal agents as, or designated agencies for implementation of the markets. So when we're looking at this integration of solar deployment and carbon markets, how this integration can help in promoting the uh, measures that has to be taken for, for the small and medium enterprises. Sure, I can jump in. Yeah. I, in, the, in the US, um, so carbon markets have largely been regional. There's no uh, national carbon um, regime here, here in the United States. Um, but within those regional or even state-specific carbon markets, um, solar, wind, energy efficiency, anything that reduces um, climate change pollution um, absolutely counts towards, uh, you know, credits that one can receive uh, through uh, carbon trading schemes or uh, penalties potentially um, if, if uh, carbon emissions are, are above a designated threshold. Um, and so we have seen some states, especially um, I would refer everybody to the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Um, many states have begun to use the proceeds from regional greenhouse gas emissions um, trading in order to reinvest into communities, especially disadvantaged communities, so that um, households, businesses um, can um, increase their uh access to, to funding and financing for solar and energy efficiency. Um, so it does become somewhat um, of a positive feedback loop if if it's designed correctly. Uh, but of course, um, every state here is, is quite different um, and uh, pricing of energy, uh, the way that policy and markets are structured um, can really affect that design um, and the the likelihood that a, a carbon trading regime is actually successful um, or just uh, punitive um, and actually just bars um, all action. So um, it's been a little bit of a hot topic here in the US, uh, but we have seen some states be able to use the, those proceeds and revenues in a way that um, reinvests in their communities. So, uh, thanks, Tanya. In terms of Indian context, as uh, Jaitanya sir has already uh, uh, hinted about the BE's initiative on in the carbon markets, we have already notified and also amended in the uh, Energy Conservation Act uh, early this uh, August. And uh, now BE will be the road to implement this program and to, to bring this carbon market as a voluntary program in India. So as of now, the developments uh, that has took place after the notification and uh, also amendment in the EC Act. So we have uh, in uh, the program called Perform Achievement Trade Mechanism, it's a cap and trade mechanism already in place that is, is, is uh, regulating since 2010. So it has a cap and trade mechanism. We are giving uh, energy efficiency targets uh, to the industrial consumers. And uh, if they don't achieve the target, we penalize them. So it has a, a comprehensive uh, uh, MNV mechanism, also the baseline studies for industries. So we have a skeleton for industries and we have also developed uh, kind of a, the modality of operation, like how the Indian carbon market would come up. So we have, uh, I believe, I'm not in the team partially, but uh, as of now, I'm aware that uh, the, the team has already initiated the consultation meets with various departments. Uh, I think they do finished the three rounds of uh, consultation meets. And I think by January, uh, we'll get a pitch, clear picture about 
how will be the implementation program and who will be the stakeholders and also the, uh, uh, the how the mechanism will be implemented uh, early January. So that is the, as of now the state of the carbon markets uh, from the VE side. So we also uh, the, the having a lot of interest from various sectors. Uh, uh, there is a hot topic as well in India, like how the Indian carbon voluntary market uh, would come up. That is uh, as of now. Uh, Mr. Jitani, then uh, since the modalities of Indian carbon market are being shaped at this moment, then what will be the role of MNR when we are looking at, again, integration of measures on both ends to promote this at the level of medium and small enterprises? Uh, what role will MNR or deployment of solar will have? Uh, or will that be a pathway for medium and small communities to uh, obtain carbon credits? Oh, sir. I think this question can't be answered as of now because yeah. the uh, modalities are yet to be finalized. Of course, the Sundar has mentioned about the PET scheme, which is now uh, going to be towards the carbon market. When uh, there will be a, if you reduce the carbon emission, you will get the CRs, and that CRs can be traded in the market. We both in the domestic market and of course we can also allow to trade them in a voluntary market uh, or international market depending upon our authorization towards their NDC whether we are authorizing them towards our national NDCs or uh, not. So we are also waiting for the mechanism six, under 6.4. Of course we have already uh, listed some of the uh, projects which can undertake under six, article 6.2. These are there. I think we have to wait till the proper mechanism is, uh, maybe we are hopeful that in COP28, some uh, good news is there about this uh, art Article 6.4 mechanism. I want to just make a few more, yeah. more comments about uh, this uh, financing. Mahesh has mentioned about the financing. So financing is crucial for the MSME sectors because uh, due to their uh, rating, the banks are charging higher interest rates. So recently this uh, CDB and SBI has launched a program called the Solar Fest, wherein they are uh, providing loan at a lower interest rate. Also, there is no processing fees. So we are also promoting such kind of initiatives. As I have mentioned that the, there is a uh, credit guarantee mechanism that is coming from the World Bank for 100 US, million US dollar. So we have to push such kind of initiatives so that there is a uh, low cost financing available with the MSMEs so that they can go ahead with it. And, and there is a uh, viability, of course, because the tariff that is being paid by the MSME is very high as compared to the solar. But the initial capital investment or the payment security mechanism for the RESCO is crucial for uh, success of such in the rooftop plants. Thank you. Uh, just to add uh, uh, to Jetani sir, uh, so in, in B, we have just uh, got a principal approval from DOE uh, regarding implementation of uh, interest subvention program for energy efficiency for industrial establishments. So this is, a, uh, this is a one of the first kind where B is introducing an interest subvention program for industries and MSMEs uh, to uh, give us interest subsidy from 4 to 8 percent for a technology adoption. So that is uh, being tabled and it is being with, uh, uh, it's getting approved by the MOP shortly. And in, but in principle, we got an approval from uh, DOI for uh, a 2000 crore uh, interest subversion program that will, for, will run for about uh, five to seven years from now. So uh, uh, this is just for information. And uh, again, again uh, along with the carbon markets, as we get the clarity, I think this scheme is also will be uh, approved and uh, we'll be tabled in the parliament shortly. Uh, th th uh, thank you, Sanjay, sir, for letting us know that what's in making uh, in India at this moment. Uh, but uh, I would say, first of all, we are coming closer to the end of our webinar time. So I will ask our participants who, if we have a quick remark, maybe less than 10 seconds, and apologize for everyone for, for, the, uh, for the delay in the beginning of the webinar.
just thank okay. you for yeah. uh, this discussion, Joshua. This has been extremely helpful. Uh, Mahesh? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, this has been excellent. Really sort of um, uh, there's a lot of convergence opportunities that I've seen here with renewable energy, energy efficiency. Uh, and uh, I think the I haven't seen so much of uh, matching of thoughts and approaches and so on, and also uh, cross country opportunities that we can think of in terms of learning more and more so that we can support the uh, most important sort of one of the most important sectors in the economy, which is MSMEs. So, really happy to be here, Shashwat. And uh, I do not have uh, uh, any other immediate questions. I have a lot of deep dive questions and opportunities that are listed down here, but I think webinar is not a forum for that. Yes. So, so I think, uh, thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Quick, quick remarks. So energy efficiency, I would say that emission, energy efficiency has promoted the renewable energy in the sense, if you, there is a, if there is an energy efficiency, you require less power and generating less renewable power is the cost effective. That's what I just want to say. <laughs> I think I clearly there is enough room and scope for the integration of both measures. And Mahesh has rightly pointed, I mean, when we were discussing about this idea a few months back, I was also continuously wondering whether this is some, an idea like this exists. But first of all, looking at the GEF unit OBE study, it gave me confidence that yes, we are on the right track. Something like this has been experimented. And today's uh, discussion gives me enough hope and confidence that this is the right project that we have chosen to work on. And clearly it has a lot of potential at the state level. Uh, between center and state and between India and US, the space where CSIS projects work on. So I would really like to thank all the panelists who, who have joined and all the audience who have joined for the webinar. Uh, thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.